Hey guys, this is Cast Paper Tape, and today you join me for episode three of Elu Base. And today um, we're bringing the Project Duna spacecraft back because uh, it needs to be my second carrier. Well, it doesn't need to be, but um, it would be useful. I'm still, I'm a little unsure if it can actually uh, perform its job as an Elu carrying thing, but I'll figure all that out at some point. But anyway, I've skipped through all the orbiting around the sun because that took quite a while because. I was orbiting around, orbiting around the sun, that tends to, and um, I'm just going to go straight to planet fall and, you know, fall back to Kerbin, and um, use, and then kind of use the atmosphere for aero capture, and then aero braking, um, because I have very little fuel, and, uh, I, you know, aero, aero braking is, well, when there's an atmosphere, and your spacecraft isn't really fragile, and you're not using deadly reentry, you might as well use aero capture and aero Aero braking because in the real world you don't really do aero capture because um, well because you need a pretty big heat shield because of all the burning up and because um, well and around Mars actually because you'd have to go very deep into the atmosphere and that'd be pretty rigorous um, because well yeah <laughs> you'd be deep in the atmosphere and trying to slow down and because you're going incredibly fast I mean it's just not a brilliant idea but aero braking makes more sense. So it does mean, in the real world, you need to take more fuel places. Um, yeah, anyway, we've actually entered the atmosphere already while I was talking. And we are going about 3,500 meters a second, so that'll be fairly burny. But um, deadly reentry isn't on, so everything's fine. Actually, oh, it's at four times time accelerate in the game, not in the video. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was a little confused. I was like, I didn't edit that in. And now it's starting to tip a little bit, which worried me, but everything was fine. Um, but yeah, that brings it in pretty quickly, which was nice. Because I went down to pretty low in the atmosphere, because I thought might be wise. Um, yeah, that's bringing it down fairly well. Uh, if you would just give me one second. Sorry about that. I um, had to go close a window, because there was a little bit of car noise outside, and I didn't want it leaking in. It probably won't, but eh better than me being paranoid and being distracted by it. Whenever I get distracted by something, I always start, like, stopping talking, which, you know, happens quite a bit, because I'm not very good at commentating. Anyway, we're still kind of slowing down a little bit, so that's still bringing the Apple Watch down, which is, which is good, because, you know, it that means I have to make fewer passes. Um, anyway, I think that's, uh, I haven't put the fades in yet, because of, oh no, it's still, it's still breaking. I think this might be my second pass I've completely forgotten because I edited it and kind of didn't look and it wasn't particularly smooth. I'll have to put some fades in in a second. Whew. Yeah, no, I think that was the second pass. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, because then I go around again, as you'll see in a second. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now I'm error breaking, not error capturing. I just kind of lost where I was because, you know, I went to close the window and stuff. Anyway. I think now it is, hell, maybe that was the first pass, I, oh, I have completely lost where I, oh, no, no, I think that was, I have completely lost where I am in the video, I'm just going to take a drink of coffee so I can stop talking about stuff that's just wrong. Yeah, yeah, that was the second pass, because now I'm error breaking, and I'm starting to realise that I'm coming down too quickly, and my Apple apps will not stay out of the, uh, will not stay out of the atmosphere for too long. So, I need to quickly rotate the spacecraft, which is currently, effectively, um, a plane, or aircraft. That's what I was going for. And keep my Apple apps above, um, out of the atmosphere. And I sh need to burn up, actually, slightly. Although, right now, I just pointed it down, because I want to be getting out of the atmosphere quicker as well, because I'm spending way too much time. And because my Apple apps dropped as well, I'm spending a lot of additional time in the atmosphere, and that's kind of um, problematic for not dying. There's no one on board, so it would, you know, computer death. But that's all also bad because this spacecraft is very expensive, and um, I would quite like this a uh, second chance at a carrier. Uh, the other one is a little under undergunned on Delta V, but I, I'm sorting that out. Um, <laughs> not in this episode, as you'll see later. Um, yeah, I, I. I Whenever I go to Elu, I always pack a little bit too little Delta V because Elu's really far away, and I always forget about the plane change and then forget about stuff I'll be carrying with me, and I'm just going to take another drink. 
All right, anyway, now I've done that, we are at the Andromeda station, moving a crew spacecraft in, almost hitting the core, because I need to do a crew change round, really, because some of the people have been on the station for a long time. And you can see there's another capsule docked on the bottom, which has, well, which will have Jebediah, Bill, and someone else, Kerman, in, um, or oh, inside it, because, uh, obviously they need to go home because they've been here a while and they need to go to Elu or something. Not this episode, but maybe another time. I don't know. I'm not going to Elu every single... I'm not sending stuff out to Elu every single episode because that's kind of... kind of pointless. Um, not pointless. That's the dumbest thing I've ever said. But um, but I, I, I don't need to be sending stuff out because there's stuff on Elu and I want to be sending stuff up around uh, Kerbin and not, like, wasting loads of time not doing anything while I'm travelling out to Elu. But anyway... I have moved some people up into the station. This was some Kerbals. The new commander is Sean Kerman. Um, picked him solely because of Scott Manley Siri. Uh, yeah, okay, we've got Bill Kerman, Jebediah Kerman, and Gus Kerman returning to Kerman. And I'm going to try and put it down on the Space Center. I'm just going to finish my coffee real quick as well. One second. Okay, I finished that. Because uh, I like trying to hit the Space Center. Well, not hit the Space Center, land near it. Um, changes a lot in Ferrum Aerospace if you're flying a shuttle back, because obviously I have glide characteristics, and it changes it a lot. So um, I've been spending a lot of time in my own save, like trying to figure out how to get shuttles back. But I was thinking while doing this, like I've been playing this game quite a long time now, and I've you know gotten considerably better at it than I was and stuff. But I still get quite a lot of joy from bringing a bringing a capsule back successfully, even from like low carbon orbit, I'm still like, yeah, nailed it, freaking, yeah, I actually, um, still like launching things to orbit and stuff, that just, uh, but not on like huge launch vehicles, I mean, yeah, that's kind of fun, like Scott Manley always says, the best part is when you build a launch vehicle that's so big it breaks on itself, but I just quite like making things that are realistic, anyway, let's take that away and skip to the carrier, getting ready to burn its engines, lighting its engines and pointing slightly off where the maneuver planner tells me to, because then I'll deorbit and uh, probably, you know, therefore won't leave uh, Kerbin. And we kind of want to leave Kerbin, because um, there's some stuff around Elo I've got to deal with. And from the last episode, if you remember, this carrier is carrying um, a prototype Keithane miner, which will be um, uh, which will be an autonomous uh, miner that stays on the ground and will be docked to to take the fuel out of it but right but uh when the next update comes out 0 0.2 uh, 0.23.5 i won't have to dock rovers which is very difficult um there'll be a grabbing arm which i can use i'll talk about that more in a bit but now i've just skipped ahead out of that burn because it took a really long time and it was really tedious and i couldn't just leave it because i had to keep like moving it around because uh it's not perfectly balanced and there isn't that much SAS on it, which you can see by the swaying of the uh, keythane miner in the uh, cargo hold. And the other thing I've got with me is a docking adapter for the Andromeda station um, around Elu. I think I called the uh, Rigel station and the Andromeda station just now, but you know, I don't <laughs> anyone really cares. But I, I got pretty close to burning off all that Delta V, but I it was I it was a little slow, so I came out a little skewiff. Um, so I do need to slightly change my course correction, um, just a slight retrograde, which actually makes it slightly more efficient, um, which is good. So we'll just uh, pull that back. And there's our uh, capture with Ilu. I don't usually leave uh, planning in because it takes me ages, but that was just quick. Anyway, we must now do this burn, and you can see I still have about 3200 Delta V, but this burn was a bloody oversight, um, because I kind of... Uh, well, I, I I left. I was very eager to take this to Elu, so I left early, um, early in the transfer. So I had to do quite a lot of finagling. That's my favourite word right now, finagling. Anyway, I had to do quite a lot of finagling to um, get my uh, capture with Elu, and that put quite a lot of extra delta v on it. And I was like, screw it, it'll be fine. I put loads of delta v in the spacecraft, and then I forgot that I kind of am bringing quite a lot of hardware along with me. That was. Um, yeah, that that may become apparent later, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the new update. It's going to have a grabbing arm, mainly for moving asteroids, because NASA's working with Squad. Oh my god, I'm sure a lot of people know, because, you know, all the big 
KSB YouTubers have done videos on it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it because asteroids, freaking awesome. 3.5 meter stock parts, freaking awesome. Don't know if I'll ever really have much of a use for them in the stock game, but rescale carbon, big use, and I like making heavy lifters that don't look dumb. On the subject of heavy lifters, I was looking at the Spacia launch stage, um, about to be done by NASA, which I thought was a bit, eh, it just looks like a big rocket with uh, SRBs on it. But I found out it's the heaviest lifter, well, the, the initial one will be the heaviest lifter in the world currently, um, even heavier than Falcon Heavy and it's um, going to be able to lift 70 tons to low earth orbit uh, and it doesn't even have a top stage bit it's I think it's like the shuttle where it has like a where basically the solid rocket boosters are so big they basically act as the first stage and the other bit gets into orbit but when they upgrade it for heavy lifting and extra planetary missions it'll be a hundred and twenty ton lifter or something stupid like that and that's not only the heaviest lifter in the world today that's the heaviest lifter ever so NASA are bringing it back. I mean, seriously, you can say what you like about NASA and the American Space Agency, but I mean, Falcon Heavy and the Spatial Launch th System is just mind-boggling. Anyway, I've cut that burn now. I, I left a little time in for me to talk. Um, but anyway, we are just cutting off the final 40 meters a second delta V of this burn. Um, and there will need to be a slight course correction, as always, because it's hard to kind of pinpoint exactly where you want to be from this far out. Another thing, which is good, floating point errors will be fixed somewhat in the next version, so that um, so that we don't have to, so that when you get into a planet, when your um, periapse moves, usually it moves like up or down, and you just get a loss of position. That'll be slightly fixed because then need, that needs to really be fixed for um, for uh, asteroids, because for those of you who don't know, some of the asteroids will be impacting Kerbin and other things, so you know, you can do lots of stuff to deal with that. Um, probably won't be too much of a problem, but it'll be a fun little feature, I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, I think in 2.4 there'll be science. Um, anyway, I just need to really quickly make a fine tune, which is much later on. I skip I skip the warping because it's quite, you know, difficult to get out, of, out here. Um, and another mistake I made is I kind of came on a bit of a high energy transfer, which um, it's like it was, I think I, I just was really dumb with all these maneuvers. So this carry is really low on fuel right now. But there's um, some of the ketane miner right now. Which, oh, which is yeah, so that's convenient timing. Yeah. So there is not enough fuel in this currently to stop around Elu. Um, well, stop around Elu, circularize my orbit around Elu, or get an orbit around Elu, which is worrying because I don't want to have to let this drift off into space. Um, so. Let's put the fuel from the ketane miner into the carrier, into the carrier main fuel tank, and uh, that'll give me just enough delta V to get into a kind of an orbit, a really bad orbit, especially because I screwed up even more, because um, I often text and listen to music and watch videos while I fly, well, while I record, because it takes me quite a long time to do videos like this. <laughs> so I made a few mistakes, and it doesn't get left in a brilliant orbit, but I'll have to, you know, rescue it. And I have a ketane miner anyway, so I mean that can refuel it, and everything will be fine because everything is awesome, everything is cool. I haven't seen that movie. I just really, I, that song is sounds so happy. <laughs> that was probably the worst rendition of it ever. A little worried there that it had frozen up, but it's fine. It was just, um, it was just me being bad at cutting. I'm better at cutting than I am at singing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And because collisions are off, like the ketane miner keeps like clipping through the cargo bay, so it kind of loses some of its coolness. I'm surprised it didn't break; it was moving around so much. But anyway, we must ignite the engines and hope like hell that we, um, you know, don't crash into the. Oh well, no, no, it'd be better to crash into it. Well, not better to crash into Elu, but hope that we uh, don't lose Elu and drift off into space. But I believe this is a four times time accelerating, judging by the flickering. I really hope it is, or this is going to go on for ages. Nah, it's a four times time accelerator, but this is a pretty long burn anyway, and pretty tense. On the other side, I should burn off the last of my RCS fuel. I have burned off most of it already because I kind of foresaw that I'd used up too much fuel, but I decide it will be best to, uh, you know, burn that off now to reduce mass and give me a little more, a little more push. 
Um, but it's 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 looking pretty tight. I, I've left the delta V thing open, and you can see that I have a little bit of excess delta V, and that sounds good. But because there's a thing called cosine losses, which means you kind of um, lose a bit of delta V uh, from because it's not because maneuvers are planned as point maneuvers. So basically, it would be like having a huge explosion behind your spacecraft, which does the maneuver instantly. Um, as the planning, but obviously you don't do that. You do it with often very long burns, so that's you know it's slight. It has a slight inaccuracy there, at least I believe. Um, and because I often kind of slightly am not pointing exactly where the maneuver says, and especially with this, which sways around loads, as you can see, it um it has a uh, it has its issues. So uh, I do lose a little bit of delta v, and by a little bit I mean more than what I had spare. So that kind of acceptable looking orbit there, don't quite get into it. Um, and right now I'm like, oh, screw that, I'm leaving, I, I don't need that probe, I can ditch that probe. I don't. I decided I didn't need it, so um, I, I ditched the mass and hope the decoupler force will help me a bit. Which was lucky, considering how close this is. And that um, Mechjeb thing over there that's telling me my AFWAPS is minus 530 kilometers is just very confusing and not helpful to me. Um, but yeah, uh, not much else to talk about except that this is a horribly long burn. I didn't bring in any Kerbals other than the pilot on this because uh, I decided um, I, I didn't want to bring any I bring any Kerbals. I want to bring some back maybe, but um, there are quite a few Kerbals around Ely right now. But I will be bringing some probably maybe in the next episode, maybe um, some other time. Who knows? I don't know what I'm doing in the next episode. I really have to get that uh, another episode of Rescaled Kerbin project station or international space station or whatever up because uh well actually made i haven't even started on that because uh i like to upload um uh, my series you know weekly and this is a little late but uh i'm sure you'll forgive me anyway it's uh starting to look pretty hazy as i need to make 150 ish delta v um burn and I only had about 100 left when i said that and it's looking pretty dire but on the last little bit of Delta V, I gained myself uh, Apple Apps around Elu. A bad looking, uh, a pretty, pretty bad looking um, orbit. Pretty hard to get to will be the main problem. But that will all be in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I hope I can save that uh, that carrier. And I, uh, yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. This has been Chaos Proof Tape. I'll see you next time.